In this video, we're going to go over two ways of easily constructing an equilateral triangle with GeoGebra. The first way is to use the regular polygon tool. If you notice, it's right here, regular polygon. And basically, you select two points, as the tool says right up here. So one, two, A and B. And then you tell it how many vertices there are in your shape. Well, with a triangle, of course, there are three vertices and this constructs an equilateral triangle. You can quickly test this out by using your angle tool, clicking, and seeing that, yes, each of the angles are 60 degrees. What's another uh, more traditional way of using a straight edge and a compass to construct an equilateral triangle? Well, what you want to do first is create a line segment, and this could be any line segment. Um, I'll just create this one right here, D to E. And the goal, then, is to use the circle tool right here. And you could use either D or E as your center, but the goal is to draw a circle with the radius equal to the segment. And then you do the same thing with the other side. Essentially, if you picture what's happening here with the circle, of course, and this is what you can discuss with your students, is that we have two circles where this line segment is the radius. Right? So here is where those two circles meet. So it stands to reason then that the distance from each point, each center of each circle, to this location, which is the circle itself, is the radius, right? It's another radius. And so you're constructing an equilateral triangle. I would just use the intersect two object tools, hover over that point to get point F, and then click your segment tool, connect D to E, and connect E to F. Now, if you're using this method and you want to construct an equilateral triangle, but you don't want to show all this stuff with the circles, and of course you can resize this one as well, um, what you would do then to finish the construction is click the polygon tool and just click right the points E, D, F, D, and E right to form the triangle, because now what you can do is hide the other circles and the segments using your object properties box. So I would go to the triangles. You have two polygons. and You can hover over them if you're not sure where they are. You have your segments here. Right, so we don't need these segments anymore. You can hide them. Right. Now here, if you're trying to figure out what we just did, each of these segments were created along the way. So for example, one thing that's easy to get rid of is the circles, E and F. We don't need those. So you can hide those. And because you recreated the polygon itself, you, you, you don't have to worry about hiding the original segments because the triangle will still be there. So probably what makes the most sense is to hide um, segments D, right, segments G, and segment H. Because D1, E1, F1 are all parts of the polygon right here. So here we also have a triangle that's been constructed in a different way. It doesn't have to show any of the pieces behind it. What's nice about this technique right here is that um, you can also show students the math behind constructing this type of shape. I right, hope that helped.